Hi everyone and welcome back to the Zombies. In this video we'll go into the Elder version of the final Dark Aether Rift, fight the Entity's Echo and unlock the Infinite Cosmos blueprint for the STG-44. In terms of preparations, the only thing you absolutely need to have is a VR-11, but I highly recommend bringing a bunch of other items that will help you survive, namely VRGL, Golden Plates, Mags of Holding and Dead Wire Detonators. The final rift is quite brutal and each of those items makes your task a little bit easier. Play your round until you get both your RGL and VR11 to punch 3, get all the perks, get two sentry guns and fill the rest of your backpack with self-revives. You'll very likely need them. You will also need some inhibitors for the quest, so pick them up from the spores control contract. You can also do that in the Dark Aether, but it's much easier and safer to bring some with you. Once ready, Activate your Elder Sigil and off we go! Once you load onto the map, make your way to the big hall between the two high-rise towers. The platform in the middle of it, where we used to have a hammer in DMZ, now has a spore waiting for you. Use your inhibitors and break the spore to find an R4D detector in the middle. The zombies will start swarming you here, so don't rush it. Clear a bit of space around and grab the R4D and leave the area in east direction. You can proceed on foot from here, but I prefer to use one of the zip lines to get up and then jump off the roof just to break the contact with zombies a bit. If you get confused, you can use your R4D detector to see the arrows on the walls that point you in the direction, but generally just get up and jump eastwards leaning to the building on your right. Pass the building and you'll see a stone gate leading to the square. Using your R4D detector will reveal multiple arrows on the gate. Go through it. You will see a mini maze on your right with arrows pointing various directions that are only visible when using R4D detector. You will need to follow those arrows to complete the maze. While you're doing it, a horde of zombies will inevitably catch up with you. The main thing here is to remain calm. Your RGL, if you brought it in, can handle the whole crowd, especially if combined with some energy mines. Keep killing the zombies until the wave eases off and then continue through the maze. You have plenty of time here, there's absolutely no need to rush. Once you complete the maze and exit through the second stone gate, a damp gold skull spawns in front of you right under creepy graffiti on the wall. Grab the skull and now we need to bring it to the whale in the hall of lower high-rise tower that's directly northwest from your position. I recommend using the zip line to get onto the building that you are in front of, then use another one to get on top of the adjacent building. From there you can just jump down to the hall where you popped the spore and get the zip line to go up between the towers. Once there, go all the way right, jump through the windows to enter the coffee house and run past the two pool tables to enter the stairwell. You can also access this same stairwell from the ground floor, but I find it way safer since when you run down you can jump over the zombies pushing up. Go down the stairs until you see the door on level 02. Go through the door, then immediately right. The whale is in the middle of this room and you need to jump on top of it. As soon as you are there, a prompt appears to trade the skull. Press interact and IT thumb drive spawns on the whale's back, while the screen on the wall turns into blue crash screen. Grab the thumb drive, jump off the whale to the ground level and go directly west. Exit the building and follow the road west until you arrive to a square building in C3 grid. If you get confused or lost, just get up on any of the buildings, find a jump pad and fly over to the location. You have plenty of time here, so as long as you don't panic, you'll be fine. Once you arrive at the target building, place your sentry guns on the ground floor. 
Try to set them so that the lines of fire overlap. It seems to help them to be more effective. Now go up the stairs in the middle to get to the front desk and walk to the computer on the left. Get in front of its screen and you will see a prompt to insert the thumb drive. Doing this spawns a boss mangler named Keymaster and a bunch of other zombies. Your sentries are extremely effective in taking him down, so just lure him into your kill box and run around a bit while spamming your RGL. Try to keep an eye on where the boss is. The moment he dies, he drops a tower maintenance key that you will need to proceed further. Pick up the key and leave the area. Where exactly you go doesn't really matter. All you want here is to get up some building and find any of the jump pads to break distance from the angry locals who didn't quite appreciate your IT support efforts. Once you have a bit of a breathing space, find your way to the main tower. Again, how you go about it doesn't matter. The obvious and easiest way is the central island, a big floating island in C3D4 grid that has a mega jump pad, allowing you to travel anywhere on the map. But if you prefer any alternative route, including taking a train up the tower, that works just as well. Once at the top of the tower, unlock the door to the structure on it and you will find a teleport inside. The room also often contains one or two wonder weapon cases, though it's random so you can also get none at all. Go through the teleport to arrive at the boss battle. Now it's time to put your VR11 to work and for me to explain why VR11 is so important here. If you fought the entity in the mission or tried this battle before, you probably know that popping each individual weak spot does a little bit of damage, but it's when you pop all of them on her, she takes massive additional damage. And that's how most weapons work in this battle as well. You need to pop all of the weak spots to do any meaningful damage. except. VR11 is different in this and it does extra damage every third weak spot you hit. So while there are many weapons that let you destroy the orb with one or two shots like crossbow and bow reclaim and so on, or a juggernaut suit that melts them very fast, the VR11 is the only thing I know of that lets you just shoot a few spots convenient to you and move on. That means that instead of trying to make sure you hit all the spots before entity moves, you can concentrate on staying alive and moving around while occasionally taking a shot here and there, which makes the whole battle so much easier. As you're probably already noticing on the screen, my fight is not really a display of the elegant battlecraft, quite the opposite. In fact, this is probably the sloppiest of the fights I had with Entities Echo, but I decided to use this footage anyways to demonstrate that you don't have to possess any crazy skills to get through them. Important thing to remember is to keep your armor up, since any of the boss's attack is an instant down if you don't have plates. If you didn't bring golden plates on you, getting more armor becomes your main task here, since without it you'll be constantly knocked out. So make sure you always run and jump around while trying to follow the entity without taking too many risks. Then anytime the opportunity presents itself, take a shot or two and keep moving. The orbs at Entity's waist are the easiest ones to hit, so go for them first, 
And if you can aim and shoot better than I do here, which shouldn't be hard at all, go for the other orbs too. Worth noting that the same strategy works regardless of how many people you are. So a team with multiple VR11s can take Entity's Echo down in absolutely no time. Your VR11 is likely to run out of ammo quite quickly, so make sure to use ammo caches around the map. The easiest one for me to remember is on the biggest island to the right of it, but there's also a few more on smaller islands. Also remember that simply dropping down between the islands is a valid escape route. Use it anytime when things get a bit too tough, you don't really have to use the jump pads at all. In fact, with a little bit of practice you can hit Entity's weak spots while in the air, so you can literally keep flying all the time and only land occasionally to pick up fresh plates and replenish your ammo. When taking this fight as a part of a team, especially with randoms, be on the lookout for teammates who go down non-stop. It might make more sense to finish the battle on your own and then revive fallen comrades as opposed to risking the whole team constantly reviving a teammate who can't pull their weight. Remember. Even if they are fully dead and revived after the boss is killed, they will still get all the rewards and the blueprint unlock. Also know that an Axfield portal is available on the left side of the largest island in the center from the very beginning. So if things get really bad and you feel there's no chance to win the battle, you can always just flee. You won't get any rewards for that, but at least you'll make it out alive to give it another go later.
Eventually though, you get it. In all the runs I've done, I noticed that once you get Entity's health below 50% point, the rest goes much easier. As long as you remain calm and persistent, this is doable by anyone. Once the boss is dead, the reward rift appears and if it's the first time you killed her, you will get a message that Infinite Cosmos Blueprint is unlocked. It's a really nice blueprint for STG44, not just for the camo it has, but also it's a pretty good build that shreds zombies very well. Apart from the STG, you usually get one of the schematics, an Elder Sigil and some other loot. I'm not sure whether schematics and the Sigil are guaranteed, but the chances are definitely very high. I got those every single time so far. Once you got your rewards, proceed to Exfil, you are done here. I hope this was helpful, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.